Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Love, Sex and Magic with me, your host, Melissa Wells. Today's guest is a dear friend of mine. She is a maturation coach and facilitator, an integrative counselor, Hay House author and mentor. Her first book, Surrender, is available now. And she's also the founder of the Alchemy of Being, the Academy of Maturation Coaching. Her mission in life is for you to break free of the confines of your past traumas, self-defeating patterns and suffering so that you can realize and come home to who you truly are. Live your life from your wholeness, your radiance and your true authentic power. I love this conversation so much. We spoke about unpacking and healing our trauma. We talk about societal conditioning. We talk about the collective trauma and the awakening that we're going through right now in the middle of a global pandemic. We speak about death. We speak about life. We speak about birth. (laughs) We even speak about orgasms. This is a really powerful um, episode and I'm really excited to dive in. So Nikki, thank you so, so much for being here with me today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I feel really excited and happy to be sitting here with you, Mel. Thank you. Mm, I just love you so, so much. You're an incre- you absolutely incredible friend, an incredible coach, healer, and mentor. And you've truly helped so many people transform their lives from the inside out. I would love to hear... What was life like for little Nikki? What was your childhood like? Oh, wow. I've I've actually never been asked that question yet on an interview, which is interesting because it's a really important one. You know, I have the story of little Nikki. And then as I go deeper into this process of my own maturation, it's getting clearer and clearer to me about the essence of little Nikki. And they're they're not entirely the same. And, you know, the story of little Nikki is that she, I, you know, I grew up in Hong Kong and, you know, I, I always say I was born at a really challenging time. You know, um, my dad had just left my mom. And so my mom gave birth to me alone and she'd been left by the love of her life. And she had two young children before me. So, you know, now I'm a mother, I, oh my God, I just get how painful and how scary that must be. So, you know, I was kind of born into this this family that was breaking down and I came out and, you know, so much of my life, I believed this story that I wasn't wanted or I wasn't loved or... I was rejected. And as I matured in myself, I realized that is not at all the truth. My my mother loved me so much. She was just human going through so many difficult things. And so I grew up in this challenging time and I immediately kind of had to learn my survival, had to learn to get through, to get by. And I kind of thought that I had to be shiny and and happy and perfect and make everyone feel better because everyone was sad around me. And that basically became like the the mask that I had to wear for forever until I started doing the work. As I as I go deeper into my own healing, I'm coming back to something, <laughs> particularly as I've moved to New Zealand, as I've moved here. Um, it's felt like such a coming home. And I'm I'm like walking in the sun and I'm I'm by the sea and I'm remembering something that I've always known. I'm like, oh wow, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. And then I'm remembering that actually the little Nikki that, you know, was born before the stories, before the 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 pain, before the difficulties, you know, I, she was just light just so much light. My mom used to say, I would literally go up to homeless people and just hug them. And, 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 and like I, she, I wandered off at two. She said I was two years old. I wandered off in the airport and I found this homeless man in the airport and I was, and I was hugging him and holding his hand. And (laughs) I just, I just remember 
now I can remember her light, you know, and that's, that's the gift, you know, that's the gift when you keep clearing what's not you and what you're carrying that that's not yours and that essence that starts to come back yeah yeah beautiful so you really were in like this survival mode for a huge portion of your life and I know that that's really what like one of the main things that you really help people to do now the women that you work with the clients that you have the amazing community that you have you're really helping people go from surviving to thriving. And I've seen yes. you model this in such a tremendously beautiful way. And just you, you know, you moving to New Zealand and really trusting your soul to do that and move your entire family to the other side of the world in a time when so many people are in survival mode is really yeah. inspiring and really incredible. And I just want you to know that it's, beautiful to see you really embody that you are thriving mm. you get to thrive and we get to thrive we get to choose thriving still even now I'd love if yes. you can share um, more about that journey so the journey of coming out of survival or the yes. journey of moving <laughs> well both both <laughs> okay so first I would just let's talk about the move you know in the opening of my book called Surrender, the very first line I say is to my children, I, to whom I owe it to show them that this life is worth living. And when the pandemic hit, you know, I really was forced to look at what do I want my children to wake up to every single day? You know, what am I willing to, what am I willing to give up in order to allow them to know that this life is worth living every day? And I, I realized I, it, I had fears that I was holding on to about who I thought I needed to be, to mm -hmm. be somebody or how I thought life had to be so that I could be su successful or safe or secure, I, I realized those were my fears. Those were my stories. And I had, to, I had to really do the work to release all of that in order to allow this move to happen. And, and I remember the moment when, you know, my husband and I finally decided to just fully leap off the cliff. Like we sold everything. We sold the house. We, we sold our stuff. We, we literally just did it all in three months and we left and we left our entire life there. And I remember saying to my husband, I want my children to wake up every day and immediately feel nature. I want them to wake up every day and to have space to play and be free and not be conditioned by pictures of who they should be, but have the spaciousness to hear who they are. And that's exactly what we've done. We've, we've got this house in the middle of the rainforest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yesterday, my son literally walked, he, we, we took him for a walk and halfway through the walk, he decided he wanted to be naked. So he did the entire walk through the bush naked. Oh my God. <laughs> I love, I love this child. <laughs> I love this child. <laughs> Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah, well, we are definitely a naked house in our house. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite kind um, of house. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, similar to that, my story of coming out of survival has been the same. It's like, and it's not, it's not been one thing. It's been a continuous journey and maturation is a continuous, alive, growing journey. It is literally growing out of who you thought you were into who you were born to be. And it's continuous. It doesn't stop even after death. It's just a continuous evolution. You know, when the flower grows from the seed into full bloom, it keeps going until it mm. dries and dies and goes back into the earth. And then it continues again. And we are the same. And so for me, the first part was starting to have that big shift in perception of my story. Am I really unloved? Or is that just how I saw things? 
And when I started to really dive deeper into it, seeing, no, my, I was really loved. It's just that the circumstances of life made it so hard for that to be expressed. And as I grew more, it's like, do I really need to be this person that I was an addict? Do I need to be using these things to survive? No, I, I'm just afraid to feel the pain and the pain mm. is part of life. Even in the writing of my book, it's like I was actually signed to write a book called Warrior Woman. I know, I was going to ask <laughs> you about that. Yeah. <laughs> half, half, halfway through the writing of the book, I was 50,000 words in. And I realized the Warrior Woman was part of my survival. Yes. I was like, no, this, this isn't who I am. The Warrior Woman was who I thought I needed to be to survive my trauma. Mm. And so I, I again, I, I had to let that go. And I, and that's why my book is called Surrender, because, you know, this process is not about finding anything. It's not about adding anything. It's about having the courage to release something, mm. to surrender something that is not you. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, a spaciousness comes through. And in that space, you hear something you couldn't hear before. Mm. And that's where, that's where the magic happens. So beautiful. I remember when you were messaging me and you were like, I need to come up with a new title for my book. This is not working. <laughs> and we were just like <laughs> banging these ideas around. And I really feel that surrender just really encapsulates the message so beautifully. And also it's a powerful reminder to people that it's not in any way weak to surrender. In fact, it's one of the most courageous um, and activating things you can do for yourself in your life. So I'm really excited to read this book of yours. And I loved what you said about how we have to surrender the story of who we think we are in order to become who we are meant to be. And the paradox of that is who we are meant to become is also who we've always been deep down. We've just forgotten. We've just had layers and layers of uh, conditioning and cultural, just layers of crap that have told us. Yeah. And I think we're really seeing that, you know, this year, last year with COVID, with the pandemic, is we're feeling this like huge collective awakening to the stories that we tell ourselves. We're seeing so many people start to really wake up to the reality of their life and go, oh my God, I this is not me. This is not my life. Who am I? You know, we're seeing more and more people go on healing journeys than ever before. More and more people, um, uh, you know, really starting to change their life, pivot in huge ways. Loads of people relocating to different parts of the world people starting businesses, people losing their jobs, people deliberately leaving their jobs, people divorcing, leaving relationships. It's like there's never a better time than right now to reinvent yourself and change your life. And at the same time, I can imagine it's very paralyzing and hard and challenging for people that are suddenly now looking around and going, holy shit, this isn't me. My life is not yes. the way that I want it to be. Yes. That's exactly what's happening, and what's happening on the collective is is also is also the journey that we we have to go through on an individual level. You know, um, it's it's part of the whole, and it's part of the one. And you know, I want to say that that first point of the process is extremely painful. We cannot heal what we cannot see. We literally cannot heal what we cannot see. And what I love about that phrase it, is that it, it reinforces that you, the individual, me, you, each other, we are the one with the power to create, to allow the transformation. Why? Because that simply cannot happen if we are not seeing where we've been being. And so the moment we see what we couldn't see before is the moment, boof, this new invitation becomes possible. 
And so the first part of the phase is being confronted by the survival. And that is happening on a collective level, being confronted. You look at how much we've been confronted with. You know, you look at all the conditionings, the systems that have been running our world, um, um, all the separation, all the conditioning, all the stories. Um, everything is kind of, I don't want to say everything because I think there's more to come, but there's been a lot of confronting, of looking at what has not worked, what has not been led by love and wholeness, what has not, what has been survival. And, and then individually, as everybody went into lockdown and got threatened and faced with their own death, you know, essentially there's been a threat to life. The invitation is to look, wow, is this life that I thought was my life? Is it really my life? Like the jobs, the routine, the things I did, the ways that I filled my time was, is that really my life or is that, have mm. I just been busy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I just living the life that others want me to live or the life that has been exactly. expected of me? Exactly. Yeah. Or it, that I was expecting of me, you know, and yeah. that's the thing. It's like, so that first phase is so painful because we have to see what mm. we haven't wanted to see. Mm. And essentially that is the point that we either can come out of survival or we grip on tighter. And that's why you kind of look at what's happening in the world. And there's a lot of suffering going on as well as a lot of waking up and the suffering is coming from the fight. It's like gripping on for dear life to what we thought we need to get back to. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. look at, you look at that, you look at the old, the past, the, the past president's um, slogan, make America great again, as if like, oh, we have to go back <laughs> to the yeah. way things were. And this like, is, this is we, what I'm hearing. Like I'm hearing people say, I can't <laughs> wait for things to get back to normal. People just always want to go back. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. And that is the point of human suffering. And that is. That is internally and collectively is the point where we grip on for dear life to what we think it should have been, mm -hmm. how we think it should have been. How I, if I had gripped onto my book, the book that died, <laughs> the book that had to like die a death, the warrior woman, I definitely wouldn't have been able to birth the book that came through. If, if we're gripping onto the story we get stuck in survival and survival mm. is essentially that place in between what we're trying to get away from and what, where we're trying to get to, to fix where we're trying to get away from. And that place in between we're calling our life, mm -hmm. but it's survival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love what you shared about we cannot heal what we cannot see. That is so profound. And it actually leads me um, onto what I wanted to ask you about. And that is, you know, we, I think when you are in this kind of awakening journey and you are looking around your life and you're saying, oh my God, you're realizing, wow, I, I created this. I want to create something new. There's this tendency to like, okay, well, what do I want to create? Let's look forward. But there's tremendous healing power in actually looking at the past and actually unpacking all that stuff. And like you said, we can't heal unless we're willing to look at it. So yes. for someone that knows that they've got trauma in their past they know they've got stuff in the past that they have mm -hmm. buried deep within them they've put it in a box they've said if I go there bad things are going to happen so I'm just not going to go there it's very understandable yes. for someone to never want to unpack that kind of stuff again so what are the benefits to someone actually revisiting the past unpacking that trauma in a safe space and how can they do that and and learn from it without it just re-traumatizing them all over again okay so really good question and i'm gonna answer it in a few parts the first thing i want to say is that is that perception that if i look at this then uh, i won't make it or i i won't be able to handle it but essentially if we really get honest with ourselves and look honestly at how we are living already, what most of us are doing or have done 
is in, in order to get away from the pain, we create an entire life of suffering. Like if you think of all the ways we, we try to get away from pain, you know, we, we, we paste the smiles on our faces. We, um, we overeat, we drink, we, we, um, sleep around, we, um, we ignore our bodies. Um, you know, there's like a million ways that we as human beings attach to, we numb out on the phone all day long. We numb out intimacy. We attach ourselves to these ways to try and get away from the pain. And what we do is we live in this terrible suffering. And so that's the first thing to look at is, gosh, is, is it worth it? Like, look at how much actual pain I'm still in. Um, rather than, you know, it's not giving me freedom. So is it worth it? You know, the, the first chapter of my book is called The Beginning of the End. Why? Because that's the beginning of the end of seeing what you thought was working that isn't working. And and so that's the first perception I want to help shift here. What we resist persists, and actually what we resist will live our life. And so as, as long as we're resisting the pain, we will continually be in some form of suffering and suffering suffering is optional but pain is part of being alive and so that the next step is is this changing this perception around pain you know pain is an experience it's a human experience and really when we fully allow ourselves to be with what we've been resisting yes it is uncomfortable and it and gosh it can be so so painful but it, whatever you can really be with will pass 100% it will pass that is a guarantee the only guarantee in life is everything moves everything changes if you can be with it it will pass and then and then you heal. So that's the second perception I want to shift here is that the pain itself will not kill you. The resistance of it may. And then to go deeper, I don't think that this is something that we can do on our own. You know, I think that often um, we can't really see what we can't see. We have blind spots. All human beings have blind spots. And really, when you're in a blind spot, you can't see. You can't see where you're seeing from. You can only see what's in front of you. So it's really important to get help and to either work with a therapist or a coach or someone who's um, trauma-informed or um, to work in a community um, that's doing the work. I think it's really important that we all allow ourselves now to receive support and and to and to receive and to get the help that we need um, because it's so powerful to be able to have another set of eyes of insight um, so so that you can see what you can't see. And I think the the last question is how do we make sure, how do we not re-traumatize ourselves? <sighs> And you, you mentioned the word safety. So how do we create internal safety? And I think, you know, I realized more and more that internal safety happens when we are no longer in resistance, when we are now willing to look at what is moving through. And we've chosen to trust that we can be there. And, and a teacher said to me once, and I'll never forget it because I really needed to hear it at the time, sometimes we have to choose to trust even when it seems impossible. And it is a choice. Not trust in like all these things out there that we're giving our power away to. Trust in ourselves. You know, when I look at the most painful moments of my life, when my the day my husband left when we separated, um, the moment that I started detoxing from my from drugs in, in my addiction, 
when I lost a baby, these extremely painful moments of my life, I remember, I, I actually remember the pain it was so big and it was moving through me. I was shaking. And I remember saying to myself, I don't know how this is going to go, but I am going to choose to trust that I can be with this. And that's, that is a moment of surrender. Mm, yeah. Something opens. Yeah, beautiful. I completely agree. Like when I look back in my life, it's it, like a huge amount of self-trust in those instances of, of, oh my God, what the hell happens next? Crisis, jumping off a cliff, you know, and you have to trust mm -hmm. yourself. You have to trust your soul and you have to trust that you're being guided towards something greater for your life. And I also want yes. to say that you may be someone who, you know, is relatively happy in your life and your life seems, you know, relatively normal and you're kind of used to a certain level of happiness. And you may be thinking, well, I'm not addicted to anything. I'm not struggling with these kind of really big coping mechanisms. And I think often, like you said, Nikki, we can't we can't see our own blind spots. And also I think people get used to this degree of like, this is just the way that life is without ever realizing or, you know, stopping to ask, is there another level? Can I, could I be happier? Yes. Could I have more powerful intimacy? Could I have deeper connection? Could I create yes. something better with my life? And why, why wouldn't you want to do that? Why settle for a mediocre life of just getting through the week, just getting through the days when you could have a life that feels deeply meaningful, deeply fulfilling and relationships that feel so intimate and powerful and deep. And every single person gets to have that if they're willing to go on this journey and trust themselves to do the healing work. Yes. And I think what you're saying there is, is just so true. It's like, do I just want to get by and get through? Or do I, do I, do I really want to live? Mm -hmm. And I think it, I think that's a difficult question because, you know, I think we don't really know what living really is until, until we, until we experience it. And so first we see how, how maybe we're not really living. And I yeah. know that sounds strange, but it's, it's like, you know, sometimes life ends up being just doing the next thing to get me through, mm -hmm. you know, finding the next thing to fill the space, finding the next thing to feel better. And at, at, at some point, and normally at some kind of crisis or some, or life will send you an experience to kind of crack you open or, or make you look deeper, which often is, it's a real gift. Um, at some point we have to ask ourselves and I, it's a big question and I ask it often to people who work with me if I was if 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 I was on my last breath and I look back will I feel proud about how I lived this life will I feel at peace with how I have lived this life here mm. and does it move me how I have lived it and mm you know, this life is not permanent. We don't just, it's not just a game that will last forever. And I think we, as human beings, we forget that so many times. Mm. And if we are lucky enough to be gifted with that reminder, which I believe is happening in this pandemic, it's like the threat to life is, is, is an opportunity to remember that this is not permanent. Mm. You know, yesterday I had a book meeting with Hay House, who, who are my publishers, and they said that yesterday was, the, I think, let me get this right, this last month was the most, the, was the biggest sales or the most, po the most popular month in history <laughs> of Hay House. I got this email from Reed as well, and I was like, holy fucking crap. That is in insane. the history of Hay House. And you know what? <laughs> 
that is that is the evidence of what is happening right now. And oh, you know what? I, yeah. I, I was talking about this with my teacher who was leading transformational programs in the 70s. Like he's been doing, he did this for 50 years. And he, you know, we were saying what they were doing, the teachers, the healers, the transformation coaches, the, the you know, they, what they were doing in the 70s and the 60s and wondering, is any of this making any difference? That is ch- shifting now. Wow. It's happening now. I've got chills. And <laughs> it's happening now. And, and it's painful because for it to happen, people have to see, shit, I've just been getting by. I can't do this anymore. I can't tolerate just, just numbing myself out in my mm. life. There's, there's got to be more to this. Yes. And there is. So much more. And there is. <laughs> and there is. And it is, you know, it's not in the, it doesn't have to be like the big explosive experiences. Sometimes, sometimes I can literally just be sitting looking out the window and looking at the trees and I will be so moved hmm. by how beautiful life is. Or I'll be sitting playing trucks with my son. And I'm so present with him and I can literally be, I can cry with how beautiful it is. It's like, we're so busy trying to get to the next thing that we're missing the depth of the intimacy of how alive life is right Mm. here, right now. Mm. And I don't even remember what your question was. Oh, I don't know. I I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't (laughs) doesn't matter. That was, that was beautiful. I have full body goosebumps in this conversation and I also feel on the verge of crying with joy and also just with just just gratitude for this life and gratitude for like when you when you shared about like Hay House having their best month I also read that email and I was ecstatic because it shows that the world is fucking waking up big time and we're going through such a huge shift and you know, when you, you mentioned about like, you ask your clients, if I was on my last breath, would I be proud of the way that I live? Would I feel at peace with this decision? I ask myself this all the time. I go to this place a lot. And that's because when I was, when I had just turned 22, my, I lost my dad and I was with him throughout his death. And so I saw him go from, um, you know, this big, larger than life uh, personality, this exuberant man to really contemplating and being with his own death. And in being Mm. with his own death, he had to be with his own life. And I saw what that was like for him. And I saw the the amends that he made. I saw that the regrets that he had, I saw the apologies that he made. I saw that, you know, oh. this, the kind of conversations that we had. And of course it deeply changed me and it, you know, it deeply changed the way that I approached my life. And I'm always living. I, I try my best to live as though this is my one shot at life. I want to, God, use me up. Like, it, like, let me be completely fully used up in this time. Let me fully live my absolute highest expression, my highest purpose, because I, I don't want to be on my deathbed regretting not taking a chance on my dreams or not going for the things or not really showing up and serving the world um, in, a way that I, in a way that I could have. Um, you know, yes. not telling the people that I love them, not making amends with people, holding on to grudges for years. These are the kind of things that people put themselves through for year after year after year. Yes. And then it it takes a wake up call like that, like death coming and knocking on your door to really yes. go, what the fuck am I doing? You know, and also I think so many people are, this, is, this was a big one for me. So many people are worried about what other people are going to think what other people are going to judge the way that they choose to live their lives. And that was a huge Mm -hmm. thing for me when I lost my dad. It was like, I remember going on Facebook and being like, how is the world still just going about their life? No one cares. No one cares that I've just lost this precious human and he's no longer, no one cares. His Facebook account still looks like it's active. And it was, I was so angry 
at that. I was so angry at the world just getting on with life. And yeah. also it really made me realize why am I waiting for people to, for strangers to approve of my decisions? Why am I spending so much time worrying about what other people think? No one cares. Just live, go and do what you want to do because no one actually cares. Yes. yes. And you know what? That is the nature of survival. And that is what's happening in our behind closed doors. That's what's happening inside our minds. That's what's happening in businesses. That's what's happening on our planet is that we're so concerned with um, trying to keep the picture alive of, of what we think it should be, that we're, rob we're numbing out our life. Mm -hmm. When I look at the end of my marriage, and it did end, by the way, because we had to birth something completely new. When I look at the end of my marriage, we had gotten so caught up in trying to either fix or save this relationship the story of the relationship that we stopped being true to ourselves, that the relationship, the picture of the relationship itself, the marriage itself became the feeding ground for us to try and keep it, to fix it, save it, keep it, you know, su you know, survive it. And in doing that, I realized how much I was suppressing of my own truth. Mm. And therefore I wasn't there anymore. And nor was he. And that's happening, that's happening all over the place. And 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 then you realize, oh, yeah, I'm trying to keep some save something that isn't even there. It's a picture. You know, survival is is only about not trying to not die. Yeah. It's not living. Are you trying to not die? Or are you living? Mic drop. And you know what? Death, I want to just talk a bit about death. We don't get educated about how to be with death mm. in our life. And death and birth are the same. Mm. They are the same. You know, when a woman is giving birth, there is a point in the birthing process where she gets to 10 centimeters and she is so open. Her body is so open to the limit. And then we call it transition that you, you literally have a moment when you think you're about to die mm -hmm. because you, you have literally been open to the fullest of your edge. And you think, and you get rushed with this terror. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to make it. And that is the point mm. that the birth happens. Yes, love That's, that. Birth can only happen in that moment. And so can we, instead of trying to run away from our death, can we, can we be with it and allow life to birth through? Mm. Yes, every, every time, this reminds me, every time in my life where I felt like I'm going through a death, it's always been followed by a rebirth. And this always. also reminds me of, I'm pretty sure in French, um, orgasm translates to little death. Petit more. Oh, because oh. you feel like you're having a little death. I'm sure that's Literally. right. <laughs> that could that could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right. But um, but yeah, we're taught that after death is is only it's more over. death. It's yes, yeah, death, death, <laughs> death, death, death. And actually, death precedes birth and life, and it's it's, it's such a beautiful gift, really. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about it all the time. It's it's an absolutely overused metaphor, but literally the caterpillar literally becomes mush, yeah. literally dissolves. His entire whole self, as he knew himself, dissolves into mush. And there's a point when he doesn't know what the hell's going on next. And then it just, mm -hmm. and we are the same. We're no yeah. different. It's always like that. So true. Yes. Oh, babe, I've gotten I've gotten so much. Oh, this conversation has just been so beautiful. Uh, can you tell oh. everyone about your beautiful new book? Because I believe that it's now available for people to pre-order. Yes. So my book is called Surrender. Um, break free of your past, realize your power, and live beyond your story. And this book is 
There's two journeys in this book, and one is your maturation journey, and I take you through a process of dissolving the attachments to the stories that are keeping you in survival. And it's a really deep and powerful process where you will literally be able to walk through and live through this this evolving process of your own growth. Um, And then there's another journey that happens alongside it, and that's the human story. So I share the story of the breakdown of my marriage and, and how we transformed it, how we literally rebirthed it. And I also share lots of beautiful human stories about from clients to friends to my own past about these moments of of waking up that allow something to die and something to birth through and it's it's just an absolute labor of love and I I can't wait for everyone to read it I believe it will help you a lot um and it has beautiful meditations in it and breath work um practices as well. So, you know, this is kind of a book that you have for your life that you can keep coming back to at different phases of change and transformation. And at the end, it's really, the whole thing is just a reminder that this was never about you becoming a bigger, better version of yourself. This was about coming home to yourself. This was about the more you can release that is not who you are, the more who you already are, who you were born as, can just unfurl through. And 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 she's already there, you know? Or she or he's already there. You don't have to find her. You mm-hmm. just need to create the space for her to come. Mm. And and that's the journey of this book. Mm. So I can't wait for you to read it. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. Oh, <laughs> I'm so, so excited for people to get their hands on this book. So I love to uh, finish our interview with a quick fire round of questions. Okay. Don't worry, it's nothing too too (laughs) strenuous. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The first one is, what is something that you're loving right now? Mm, Nature, nature, the rainforest, the ocean, getting out every day, submerging myself in it you talk about orgasm nature is like one constant orgasm (laughs) it's literally like it's so cause constantly alive and it's just ah yes from one rainforest um inhabitat (laughs) inhabitant to another (laughs) I completely concur um what is something that turns you on Mm, intimate authentic conversation I could dive into those deep conversations forever. And when my husband, who who doesn't love them as much as me, when he dives into them, I just want to jump on him. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I can imagine. I love that. And finally, when was the last time you experienced magic? Oh, yesterday. The most amazing thing. It's so simple, but it was just, it's kind of still moving me. I could cry. Like it was my son's day off from nursery and my husband and I took him for a walk through the rainforest and watching him walk. He's two and a half through this bush. He was so at peace in his body. He was so grounded. He was so at ease. There was no fight. There was no struggle. There was no distraction. He was just so at peace walking through. And then slowly he just started shedding his clothes. And then he asked me to take his nappy off. And he was just walking naked in the bush. And there was something about this walk that was just, it's moved me because firstly, it shows me how how at home he is now living this life, you know, that he's at peace being embodied in, in his body and in nature and, and, and just being in the present and how, how medicinal it is to be there as a family, my husband and I, my son, you know, my daughter was at school, but the three of us just being in the present like that together, gosh, it was just really moved me. (laughs) <laughs> it was so beautiful. It was magic. 
that really is magic. I got completely lost in the story. I just completely forgot that we were having a conversation. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, you know, I was after I was thinking, hmm, that's how my children are going to grow up. That's how I want my family to live, you know? Like, I want to be naked in the bush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, babe. Well, this has been just so magical and so powerful. I love you so, so dearly. Everyone, please go and order this book. It will change your life. I'm so excited to read it. Nikki, where Thank can you. everyone Thank come you. and find you and get more Nikki in their life? So you can find me on my website, nikkiclinch.com, um, uh, where, you know, you hit the website and there's lots of places that you can go. We have quizzes that we can walk you through and we have lots of amazing programs that you can come and work with me on, depending on what you're ready for at your stage and your journey. Um, and uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Nikki underscore Clinch, where I share a lot of my learnings, my heart with you. Um, and yeah, and the book is available everywhere that sells books. So please go and read it. Um, also on the website, there will be, there is um, the audio versions and um, offerings of the meditations and the breathwork practices. So if you want to come and dive deeper into those activations, then you can come to the website and, and find everything there. So yeah, mm. I look forward to meeting you all and finding you. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you so much. I love you, Mel. I love you. <laughs> so, my loves, hope you absolutely loved that episode. If you did, share it on the gram, tag me, tag Nikki, and um, yeah, let us know what you think. If you love this podcast, please remember to leave us a review. It helps us gain new listeners and expand our community to even more hearts. So thank you again for listening and I'll see you all in the next episode.